Two weekends ago, Yoda and I took part in an event that was a community building event, but it was a, an event based around canning. So we're going to do a quick video. And butchering. And butchering. Yeah. And butchering, absolutely. We're going to do a quick video and share the experiences we had this weekend. All right? You guys ready? Stick around. Hey, welcome back to Grumpy Acres. We're glad you guys could be here. I'm here with my lovely bride, Yoda. Um, she, she spent most of the time two weekends ago over there. I was over there. I, I had stuff I had to do here, so I did not spend a lot of time with her. So she is the one with, with all the information about what happened. So basically what we're going to do is I'm going to interview So So the, the first thing is, how did this come about? How, how did, oh, first off, first off, what, what went on? They, they were butchering chickens. Oh, yeah, so, um, basically, there was a group that got together, there were four couples, mm -hmm. and they reserved 60 chickens, and you may lose some chickens out of those, mm -hmm. any of us that have raised chicks, we know how that goes, um, so they ended up with, like, 57 something like that I think two or three died um, so they only had to pay for those 57 mm -hmm. um, they had the person that they ordered them from uh, he actually raised them and so then all they had to do was pay for them and go pick them up and it was like um, 12 50 a bird something like that mm -hmm. so yeah you pay a little bit more for that but um, Anybody who farms and raises chicks, you know, especially with meepers, you're putting in ten dollars, maybe a little bit more, well, and, into and, each chick. But they much, taste how much way do chickens better. cost now? If, if you get an organic chicken, how much does it cost? Like thirty bucks, right? Uh, no, not I bet, that much. But uh, it's I don't know. It depends on how big the bird is. So uh, if you're if you're raising them and you're doing all that, you can get a nice size bird. So we've actually butchered birds at eight to 12 pounds mm -hmm. and so um you're never going to find a chicken like that in the grocery store so it's always going to be three to four pounds something like that so we had we had four or five families mm -hmm. that went in together four families four families that that bought these birds mm -hmm. and they raised them mm -hmm. and then they went and got them and it, and it was butchering day and one of the people reached out to you because why um because of my canning mm -hmm. experience and so um it was just getting me over there so that they could can um and they of, didn't have a lot of canning experience right no i i had taught our neighbor i i had showed him how to can chicken before we did that i think in the spring and so we did that in the spring and kind of showed him how to do that mm -hmm. so he knew um the difference is there were so many people with so many different canners um, they're all Americans, Prestos, different weight sizes. So you had 10 pounds, 15 pounds. Um, so it was just walking everybody through that, making sure that they understood we need to oil our lids. We've got to do it this way. We, you know, that kind of thing. I was probably really a bad teacher. It would have been better if the weather was warmer. So when the weather is cold the way that it was... Oh, hold on. You're getting ahead of the story. Oh, am I? Yeah, you're getting ahead of the story. Okay. Okay. So, so the... They didn't have a lot of canning experience. And Their grandmas had canned. Right. And, and it kind of, it kind of, it kind of, something that went away. And so they, they reached out to you because they wanted the experience. They wanted, they wanted to, to find out. So the, correct me if I'm wrong. So the... The event it was it was Saturday they butchered. Right. Sunday they canned. Well, they canned meat. They had so Sunday actually they disassembled everything. So got okay. the wings, legs, got everything deboned and that kind of thing. I almost think it would have been better if we did that on Saturday, but it was well, fine the way that they did it. Everybody's got their everybody own does it different, right? And if you if if you guys want to see our process, we've got a video, mm -hmm. and then hacks from the homesteader also have a video. also has a video. In mm -hmm. fact, I think hacks hacks video is probably better than ours. Wow. The one the, the one that's on there, the, the one that we did up up at their place is better. I, I just personally. I don't. I can't remember the video. There okay. we were so many videos in. So. But oh, look, what's in the background? Yeah. Stupid cat. 
That's freedom, by the way. But so, so the the butchering process was different than what we do, right? No. What, the way they the way they well they 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 killed the chickens differently. So, yeah, they killed them differently than the way that we do. But it was also again learning experience for mm -hmm. the youngers. Um, so the the um, don't name any names. So the younger one of the sons he was the one that was taking the heads off and, and did that with the way the way they did so the way we do it is we use kill cones mm -hmm. we slice the the jugular mm -hmm. and let them bleed out mm -hmm. they the way they did it was they had a table and they had they had four cones on it mm -hmm. but they had a a, a a a wood round with two nails in it mm -hmm. they would lay the chicken down put the head between the nails pull it taut mm -hmm. lop the head off and then stick it down in this bucket yeah. now as far as as far as efficiency goes, I'm thinking that the, the table's better, but as far as... Hang on a second. Okay. So, because okay. there was something in a lot of this that you missed. Okay. So, um, I got to... Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to... No, you no, be Nobody truthful. knows, but... Be truthful. Um, so, Ben actually said and had to make a comment to the, the son mm -hmm. and said, hey, that's going to go much easier for you if you take the legs and the wings, get that in one hand and there is a way to do that and so you get them in one hand and then you lay it out there and then you can swap it. so when you you know then that's when you're going to take the head off so once once he got that program down <clears throat> it went a lot easier so i would say if you knew that process and if you could do that process yes it was probably more efficient because it was kind of messy before he learned the process <laughs> Right, there was a lot. There was there's a lot of yeah. It, we it, it were wasn't getting, good. We were we were getting chickens on the butchering table, and so um, I'd be like, "What the hell? Where'd the neck go?" And so the neck is actually part of almost the best part of the chicken. Um, you really want that neck and that meat for the broth. And so it's like, where did this go? And then the next bird we would get, you know, it had like a super long, like, okay, just the skull got taken off. But it's a learning process. Yeah, and exactly. so, you know, everybody's got to learn. So it, it was all good and everybody, every, everybody and, just relaxed and it was not a problem. And you said they left them whole, right? Yeah. So that's where we do it a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So if we know that we're going to quarter and debone, we don't worry about taking the insides and all that stuff out. We just, we, um, it is what it is. And so we're taking our time and we're going through and we're deboning. Well, first we take, I do, I take the legs off and then I take the wings off and then I go in for the breast and all of that stuff. Um, never had I really thought to make sure that I saved the, what did we save? We saved lungs, heart, gizzards, and gizzards. Livers, I don't, did we do kidney? I can't remember if we saved, no. No, because we didn't fry any of those up. I don't think we did, if we did, I, I wasn't. Just whatever I was looking at, if it was solid, I was just pushing that over. And then that's where Cowboy was going through, and he was kind of pulling things over, and he knew how to turn and I've never seen this before either and so well um, Ben showed it first but the gizzard you have to kind of slice in a certain way and then you turn it inside out I do that every time I do a chicken but I've never I don't really yeah and so then you well because you always get the chickens after I process them. that's true it's yes okay. yeah, so and yeah. so well unless I'm cutting and doing whatever so like at Patty and Darren's I didn't do that because they were getting they were getting no, we the, the oh, insides were they, all they in. They didn't do it. Well, and and that's a good. That's and, actually. And a good actually, point. I has I didn't have the gizzard. I couldn't break. Okay, so I tried the heart first. Not terribly bad. So if I was starving, I would eat it. It it, it was the texture more that mm -hmm. turned me off. Um, and then they convinced me to try the liver. <laughs> that would have been much better as a pate. And so. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, but I got it in there. All I could taste was the iron and all that so stuff. Let, and I had to quickly get a drink and rinse my mouth Let off. me tell you how to do do fried chicken innards. <laughs> you, you, you batter them with a good batter. You deep fry them. And you serve them with some salt and pepper, Tabasco sauce, and Budweiser long necks. Oh, I don't. That's, that's I don't the know. way you eat them. 
But, yeah, and uh, I'm with you. I'm not a big fan of gizzards because the texture. I didn't is, try the gizzards because they, they had me try the liver and that turned me off. And I said they're not going to make me the, stupid Gizzards anymore. taste good, but like you said, the texture because it's, it's a it's a big muscle basically, and it's 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 it's, it's kind of chewy. But anyway. Yeah, I think they were all chewy, except for the liver. The liver was mushy, so it just yeah. kind of turned you off to that. But. but, you know, in an austere setting, though, you want to save all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, it, mean, it's so good for your body, In too. an austere setting, you want to save the chicken feet, because yeah. you can boil them. You yep. get all kinds of collagen. Yep. You want to save all the sweet meats. Mm -hmm. um, lips. The heads for the lips. Mm -hmm. Well, you call them lips. Lips. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, so, you know, it's just, it's one of those things, you know, right now we have the luxury of not having to worry about that. Right, right. You know, so, because yeah. cause we did, whenever we butchered the, the big batch of chickens, mm -hmm. that one time we took all that stuff and fed it to the, mm -hmm. uh, our friends of ours had a pig, so we gave Sassy all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so anyway, the, the, the first day was all about butchering. Yeah. And it, I, it went really well. It, it went, it went, because I, excellent. I showed up, I showed up and did a little filming and then I had to go do something else and I came back. <laughs> And everybody was extremely happy. We had some special guests. We had two two guests. Mm -hmm. So it was Angela and this other circle, and then two. Who were the two guests? So Nikki Nikki came mm -hmm. up, and um, so somebody. There, Nikki's one of our neighbors. Yeah. So I met her. Um, oh my gosh. <clears throat> you black pilled her in the parking lot of Orson's. I did not. I I did not. <laughs> I just. I just opened conversation and so I was like what are you buying all that feed for what the, you know I'm like you realize how much money you can save and so then I told her how to save money and that's how that friendship started so um, well, we've been that. doing nothing but white pilling her and her husband yeah. since then We're I don't think we have to white pill her husband they, they, you know what and I'm not even sure we have to white pill Nikki you know? they're she's, good they're, she's they're right good people there. Yeah. They, they are good people yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then um, and then we had Indiana Mike's wife come out Mrs. And Raymond or MMR, MMR, as she's known now. Yeah, and we get to see them again. Do I understand Next weekend. right? Next weekend. That's okay. cool, man. I'm looking forward to that. So, they're they're um, good people. Yeah, so then, um, so we've got got that done. And the, um, the butchering day was all the husbands. There was only one wife there because it was her, her house. Well, no, Misty has something to do. She left. Oh, so she wasn't even there. Uh -uh. Um, so, um, uh, Adam's wife came and later so later on in the day that's right because she was later there in the back. day yeah she, uh, she brought us back. lunch she brought us pizza and so um that doesn't count she wasn't she didn't she didn't have blood on her it head. does count actually okay. so when you're doing when you're doing a homestead like that you're doing a gathering like that you need to have someone okay. who is making sure that everybody is fed and watered and all of that so it does count okay okay um <clears throat> I'll argue with that all day long I'm just saying she she wasn't she wasn't hacking any chickens apart. No, she was making sure we were fed. Okay. Because there is nothing worse than butchering chickens and eating it the same day for lunch. Yeah. But the first Gross. the first day went really well. When I got when I got back, it was late in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you guys were almost done, mm -hmm. and everybody was in really good mood. Yeah. And everybody thought it was great. It's always so much fun when you're doing something like that. It's a lot of fun to do it with a lot of people. It just goes fast. Seems like it goes faster, mm -hmm. and um, you're laughing, you're talking, you're joking. You're what is it? Many hands make less work. Light work. Yes. Light work. Mm -hmm. So okay. So we go to the second day. Mm -hmm. Second day was canning day. Yep. So how many canners did we have? Nine. Running? You had nine canners. Nine canners running. We would have had ten, but I didn't have an extra ring for that, so I I couldn't get that one operating. And and correct me, they were. All American, mm -hmm. Presto, mm -hmm. and a mirror. Mirror. Uh -huh. A mirror. Yeah, and and if you guys need a canner, we'll put a link down below. You guys can go look it up. Um, th there were there were some things about they acted different during. The, you learned some learned some different things about canning with them. So it was extremely cold that day. And what? How? Are, first off, how were you canning? What? What were you using to, to heat them up and everything? Well, we had some um, double burners. I'm, I'm not sure if that was Camp Chef or what those were, um, but there were some double burners, like what you would put a um, fish fry or do something mm -hmm. like that on. Um, then there was um, some propane grills. There was our event stove, which you still need to go get my event stove. Um, our event stove, I could put 
three canners on that one. It's an eight burner. Yeah. Um, and, and there's some video at the end. Of, we'll, we'll throw some video up so you guys can see. Yeah. So we had quite quite a few different things going on. We were all outside. That was the only way we were going to be able to do that. And so um, the temperature was low. Um, the mirror, it was a, we, we actually had two different kinds. We had an older mirror and then we had a brand spanking new one that I actually, I actually helped take it out of the box. Okay. And so um, I was, I was like, okay, we, because what I had, we were blessed with what, 11 gallons of milk. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, this would be a nice test. So I took some of that milk over six gallons and then put those in jars and was going to just try because that only takes 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> and so um, I thought, yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, yeah, I'll just run those through and make sure everything's working. When make sure everybody's when you're in the canners kitchen, are it's working. 15, 20 right. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, uh, and it's not freezing cold outside. Yep. And so um, that brand new mirror. I was like, why isn't this working? Because on the box it says it's faster, the fastest of everything, and more efficient, and that kind of thing. And so I was like, oh, we're definitely trying this one out. And so I put that on there. That sucked. Okay, <laughs> so, so I, I need to get a hold of Bradley and find out if he got that working. The, the, difference, the difference between all the canners are, the, the, the All-Americans are, they're cast aluminum, right. but they're extremely heavy. Yes. And even, even on the stove, it takes a little bit longer to heat them up. They'll take in the heat, and they hold the heat better. Okay. They're not going to leak that heat. And then the, the Prestos are a thin aluminum, mm -hmm. and they heat up really quick on the stove yes. in here. Yes, yes. Okay, and then the I, the mirrors, uh, they look like they were the same as the Prestos. I, they looked like it. Um, but they didn't in fact, I even heat. made a comment because I was like, where was that made? Thinking like, oh, yeah, okay, brand spanking new. It came out of China. Here's another thing that they're doing. They're trying to fool people and this kind of thing. It was made in Vietnam. And so I was like, well, it's really weird. I, I don't understand why I can't get this thing working. Mm -hmm. So we both started going through these directions because we're like, what? No, I think we were like, I want to say an hour and a half in, if not more on canning in that mirror and other canners had already started heating up and were processing and so we we're like basically in that cold weather it took each canner about an hour to heat up and get rock into where it well where, where we could do well, that and one of the one of the problems you had was the wind too yeah because you ended up turning you you turned the event stove around and put put a, a wind block up I did, yeah. at one point. Well, Chris put the wind block and it, up. And, and, and once you did that, they, they started heating up a lot quicker. Well, quicker than I, they were. Quicker than they were, but I wouldn't say a lot quicker. But, yeah, so we had to get that blocked in Kansas when that's so When you're on the prairies, it, it just is what yeah. it is. So. Okay, and, and that's something else. So the, the first day we had two All-Americans and a Presto next to each other, right? Mm -hmm. on, on Sunday, on our events. Day. Okay. And the, we ended up moving things. Well, but but the the Presto heated up a lot quicker on the first day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They, yes. In fact, all of them heated up quicker than the All Americans. Right. But on the second day, that wasn't the case. Mm -mm. The All Americans well, performed much better. Why do you think that was? There was no wind. There was no wind. No wind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that and, that's and, the only difference. Temperature was still cold. And that's the great thing about this whole this whole this whole event was. Wait, how long have you been canning? We've been canning for what, 10 well, years? I've been canning. 10, 12 years? I've been canning longer than that. I've been canning, oh my gosh, 30 years almost. But we we really never canned outside, except for one time out here. It didn't go well, so we brought everything mm -hmm. back inside. But now I know why. Yeah. The so, wind was also blowing. So we, we learned mm -hmm. we, we a, a really good learning experience, even for us. Mm -hmm. uh, she was able to share her experience, and, and, and we learned mm -hmm. some stuff, too. Mm -hmm. And this is really good because, you know, one of the things about our channel is we're we're trying to trying to give people the experience of, of what you need to do in an austere setting. What happens if or you... What you can do. You, what, what you can, can do. do. What you can do. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. better That's better words. You know, but, but there may come a time when your electric stove doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Or there may, there may become a time when you're having to cook outside. It's, it's 100 degrees outside, and you have to cook outside your house, or else your house is going to be 120 degrees. Yeah, that brought up a whole other thing, too. Okay, right? tell them. So, um, we propane. Mm -hmm. So, we have a backstock of propane. Good thing that we did. 
Chris has a back stock of propane. Good thing that he did. A few other people also had back stock of propane. We ended up just on Sunday when we were canning. We ended up having to fill up on propane on Monday to be able to continue to get everything else done. It takes a lot of propane, and I think Misty looked it up, and I think she said uh, the 20 pound, the 20 pound, if I remember this correctly, and hopefully Misty sees this and she can comment below, and I'll try to verify it. I think she just Googled it. And so the 20 pound propane tank, which is the one you can get at Dollar General or mm -hmm. whatever. The Blue Rhino. Yeah. Um, so that will last for three constant hours. That's it. Okay. We were literally canning from nine o'clock in the morning. I don't even think I got home until what, 11? No, you got home at 10. At 10? Okay, so 10 on Sunday. And then Saturday, I think, was later because none of us were going to check out before we made sure that we at least had that batch done. Um, we just wanted to kind of see how everything did. And, um, yeah, so you have to make sure that you have a lot of propane on hand, which well, and, brings and up a good, another point on prepping. Um, if you do lose electricity and you are going to have to go outside, do you have enough propane stacked? Well, and, and, and that brings up two or three different things I can think of. Number one, how much did we do? We did six gallons of milk, or right. you guys did. Six gallons of milk. Yeah, 57 We chickens. ended up with, with eight cases of chicken. All right, there was more than that. You keep breaking that down to eight, but well, I did, when that. I did the video, there were eight, eight cases there. Oh, we weren't done. Okay, so you did more than eight cases. Yeah. yeah. And how many how many quarts of broth? Like everybody took home sixty quarts. We didn't get all of those done, so okay. we were able to. I think the first batch, I think we were able. Oh, I just don't know. So we had nine canners going. Uh, we could get 21 in my large one. We could get seven in my medium one. We were able to get seven in the other. And then, so then um, from there, we had two that we didn't use. So that would have been seven. So whatever seven times seven is 49. So 49, uh, almost 100 quarts. Okay, so 100 quarts. And they split it up. They each, they each took... Not yet. They're, everything well, they're, has to get finished. But they are going to finish. Um, each couple will get... I think they broke it down and thought it would be like 68 quarts a piece of broth. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and well, the point the point I'm trying to make is... Oh, it was... I know it was three cases minus four jars of chicken that everybody got to take home. Okay. So, but my, but my point is, I mean, just just our propane expenditure was about three and a half, 20, 20 pound cans. We, but and we, we were just helping out, but ours but, got filled back up. So, but no, no, we did, we did, we we that was all part of the deal. But no, it wasn't. It but was we, just but we nice did, they did. We that's how many of ours got done, and then everybody else had had that many. So, but there was a lot of food that was done. Mm -hmm. I well, mean, that was... We had four tanks. We've got four tanks out there, which you need to make sure that when you go get my event stuff, you bring the other two tanks they're back. Still, they're still... I don't there. know that those are going to be full because hopefully while they pad it, they're using it. So, um, you but know... The, but the point, the, point is, the point is, yes, a lot of propane was used. Yeah. But there was a... In fact, they had one of those 25 cubic uh, feet uh, chest freezers that... The compressor went out on, and they were using it as a, a cooler. cooler. So they literally, and another cooler. They literally filled that thing full of chicken and ice, and then they had one of the big, big, huge. What is that? A, a nine cubic like feet. Something. It might have been more one of the than one of the great big huge coolers full. So and these are all like they fish a lot and hunt a lot. Right. So they've got you know we all have those great big huge coolers. So there was a, there was a lot of stuff. A lot of propane got used, but there was a, a lot, lot of food that was processed. Well, I just wanted to clear that point that if you're going to do something like this and you're talking austere settings, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that propane is something you're putting in your preps. Right, and and, and a lot of people a, would miss that. There's another thing. There's it it so. What we what we did was anytime we get a chance to pick up an empty propane tank at a yard sale or an auction or if because, somebody's giving it away or somebody's giving it away, we get it, and that's the reason why we had the extra propane because mm -hmm. because over the years we've gathered all these propane tanks and then we we take them and we fill them up and you can't you cannot let them sit for for a long time because they will they will eventually leak and all that, mm -hmm. but we we keep enough on hand so that when we have something like this. We, we can, got it. We, we've got it. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I'm, ha I'm going to have to get the, the flammable building up and get all the propane tanks in there and get that taken care yeah, of. Yeah, because I've got that 100 pound that I need to go get right. filled up to. And, and, and in fact, and she's right. We bought a we bought a hundred pound propane tank. I found that on Craigslist, I think. And you paid what thirty bucks? It For, was, Forty. It I was think. it was yeah. dirt cheap. Yeah. You know. They so, used it on the food kitchen on, on bus truck, or yeah. something like the truck. You know, yeah. So so as you're going out and you're and you're, you're you should be going to yard sales. Yeah. You should be going to au farm auctions, estate auctions, uh, just wherever you can find it. Um, and if you have any questions about if they're usable. You can take them to one of your local propane people, like MFA or one of the local propane, yeah. and they'll tell you. Um, because some of the older ones, and I didn't know this till this weekend, but some of the older ones, the, the safety valve on it is different than the modern one, mm -hmm. and a lot of places won't fill those. So you can you can go have them check it and, and make sure everything's, and they can replace those, I guess. Yeah. They're, they're replaceable. But, but that was, and, and that was a good learning experience uh -huh. too. That was, that was good to know. Mm -hmm. So, so Saturday you guys, you guys canned. No, Sunday we canned. Or Sunday. And Monday we canned. Sunday you canned. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunday was chicken and Monday was mostly broth. broth. Was there any, anything special about the broth? Any, any special <laughs> lessons or anything? Yeah, so I had never really seen anybody. In fact, we did a live and we had somebody ask about if we put the solids in there or not. And um, I had never, I had always been taught to um, take the solids out. I even use cheesecloth and, you know, pour everything through mm -hmm. and uh, make sure that everything's separated. And then I'll take that extra chicken and I can do, I don't know, whatever. Mm -hmm. I can do mac and cheese or, you know, cream noodles or whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's really good meat. No, you don't want to get rid of that. And so, um, so we... I got through all of that, or they got through all that stuff. When I showed up on Monday, um, they had just got done or were finishing up picking the meat off the chicken. And they had that in a tub. <clears throat> and then as they would fill the jars up with the broth, they were actually filling the jars with chicken. And so there was maybe, I don't know, a quarter cup to half a cup of chicken in there. Mm -hmm. And I, I asked, I said, why, wait, why are you doing that? Because out of all, you just can the chicken, right? Right. And so Chris swears that that makes the broth taste better. So I picked up some turkeys on sale, and I did all my broth yesterday, mm -hmm. and I let the solids in. So we're gonna find out how that worked out. In fact, you've been eating on some of it. So how did that work out? Well, the 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 ones that you set aside for the 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 refrigerator are more akin to turkey soup because there's a lot of meat in it. Well, I mean, I mean, I don't it, know it, what tastes, it tastes really good. It. She got mad at me because I was the the other day. I was I was he taking was dipping right out of the pot. I was taking the broth right out of the pot, putting it in a little from cup. where I was cooking the turkey. It you was, don't do that. It was so good. No, you oh my don't God, do that. It was so you don't do that. That's no, a no, no. No, I'm gonna do it because it I'm tastes putting so good. a lock on that damn thing. You know, but no, but seriously, I I'd never seen the meat in it before either. Yeah, no, it, I mean, it wasn't bad. And I left herbs and everything mm -hmm. in um, this time around, so i um, kind of interested. I did take the sage leaves out, though. Uh, this I morning this morning for there. breakfast, I literally took a, a cup and was filling my mug up, and that's what I had for breakfast. It was so good. I know. Ask me how I know. Because the dirty dishes were in the and sink. And there was a big mess on my stove. Oh. Yeah. It but. was good. It was worth it, in my opinion. I'm glad you had fun with it. So anyway, so yeah, that was it. And um, super exciting. Got to meet some new people. I really enjoyed everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't think there was one person that I walked away and I was like, I don't want anything and to do with I, them again. I got to meet some of the wives. Because yeah. on Sunday. Sunday, on Sunday, more of the wives. On Sunday, more of the wives came out. Yeah. I got to meet. Because I, yeah. I kind of knew I kind of knew all the guys from, from being around, mm -hmm. you know, hanging out with them every yeah. now and then. But I got to meet some of the wives. Mm -hmm. Got to meet Nick. Or got to know Nikki better. Got to meet yeah. uh, Mrs. Ravenwood. Yeah. Um, it, it, it was a really good evolution. I mean, we... Now we're into evolution. It, it's a military term. <laughs> military <laughs> term. But it, it was a really good event. It, it was it a really great was. event, yes. Um, yeah. Learned some really good lessons. Yes. I mean, things yeah. 
things that we didn't know, and we've been at it for quite a while. Well, and really, now I can just step outside my box. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I, I've always liked to stick my middle finger up at USDA because I just think that they're holding people back. But um, now, after this weekend, I think for what sure kind my, of middle, canning were you my doing? middle finger is always going to be up at the USDA. What kind of canning were we doing? Heritage canning. Heritage canning. We were not yes. doing rebel canning. Yes. We were doing heritage canning. Right. Yeah, so. so no, it was super exciting, and it, it was a great deal, and I, I hope that the pictures do, and the video that we did get, I hope it does justice for how much was it's done. It's not. I, I can tell you right now, it's not. I, I guys, I'm sorry. I, I was just so stinking I, I tried busy. to get some. I tried to get some good video. The, the video is not bad. It's only about four minutes long. Um, as far as the community building, it was just, a, it was about a bunch of people getting together, um, learning a few new tricks, everybody figuring out, you know, okay, this person does it this way, this person does it that way. We really don't, not one person has all the knowledge. And if there's somebody else there, like even with butchering, and I've been butchering, and so I learned some new tricks. And so it's like, wait, what? And then, you know, like I said, I would never save the insides of a chicken. Now I would. And in fact, um, I hate to tell you this. I save the chicken at insides every time I do the chickens. You just don't eat them. I cook them for myself. Yeah, I know. Because I know you don't enjoy them. Yeah, I know. And so that's fine. But um, so there's a lot of things. Well, you'll be happy that um, the insides of the turkey on this one, they're still in the turkey. I figured it was dog food, so I just left them in there. No, Grandma used to grind it up, put it in the grave. I did not do that, and I will not do that especially after tasting the liver. So, um, but yeah, no, um, no, it was good. And that's what it was about. It was just, you know, community building is a lot of, do something with your dog. Community building is a lot of just spending time together mm -hmm. and getting to know each other. And the only way you're going to really get to know each other is to work together. And you really figure out quick when you're working together what somebody's work ethic is like and then you know how you're going to deal with that mm -hmm. and then later on down the road when it counts so so at the okay we're going to close the video okay all right if if your final statement to everybody if if, if you're going to give anybody any advice to do something like this what would you say to them mm -hmm. i would say Open your gates, invite people over, engage with people. Now, you're not inviting strangers over, although there were strangers to them going over there. But you vouched for them. <clears throat> I did. Well, one was a stranger to me, but I did let them know that she was a stranger to me, but I had met her husband. And so, you know, can we do this and that? Because security is a, a huge issue. Still, yeah. Um, but... Um, they knew my character and my morals and values. And so because of that, I think that's what made that okay. And then, um, cause they know I would never, I wouldn't be reckless and invite somebody over that was just a piece of crap. Um, but, um, yeah, I think you just have to kind of let go and open up a little bit in order to build that community. Now, like I said, they were already a community. Yeah. But um, we got to expand on that community because we were we were able to introduce a few other people there. And as a matter of fact, um, one of them will actually be over there tomorrow and then she's coming over here. So um, that speaks volumes uh, for her to be able to uh, walk through that gate and get what yeah. she needs. So, um, yeah, so we were able to open up a little bit more there. So yeah, and like I said, I, I, I suggest I, just open it, open up. I did not spend as much time over there as you did because I was doing, I was doing stuff over here and I had, I had some other things. Well, you were helping somebody in, in the community. Well, but, and, but I came home, I came home and I did, I did a lot of work here too. But well, and you were helping with insulation. But I think so. I, that, that was the thing that got me was, was at the end of the day, you know, everybody worked well together. Even even people that know each other. Uh, Mrs. Ravenwood, it was she had butcher chickens before. They had never done it on that scale, right? And they had not done it that way, right? And but she she learned, and now she, she's taken away what she would do and what she would never do, right? And so you know, there there's a lot of that. What's easier? What's not easier? And that kind of thing. Yeah. So, so we need to go ahead and close out this video. We do. We and do, we do. Um, it's getting way too long. I think. 
most important thing is? Go live a life done free. And build your community. Yeah. Take care of Community. Folks.